Welcome to day 35 of my 100 days of Fafla journey. Today we're gonna go over one of those infinite marquee loops that you find on the Wafla clonables, but this one is the best one by far out there. Uh, this one is made by Timothy Rick, so I've had the pleasure of finding it on the Wafla library. I broke it down, I customized it to my needs, and it's pretty awesome because you can speed up the looping on scroll you can make it stop on hover so whenever you hover over it it stops and you can click on the items and that's exactly what i was looking for uh, you can also do the reverse and you can add some attributes to make it even better now this is made by timothy ricks and i made a clonable i give credits to him of course on that clonable uh, so if you want the original file you can find it there my file is just a copy of that file and it's just edited a little bit so i give all credit to the guy uh, timothy ricks is an amazing person he's done so much for this community and thank you timothy for all that you do for this community uh, so without further ado let's jump to this project don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up and stay tuned on this 100 days of fafla journey so let's get to it all right so first things first this is the original project made by Timothy Ricks. Uh, it's called Scroll Marquee. It's by Timothy Ricks. It's on the Maiden Webflow library, so you can clone this on there. Now, this is made on different uh, styles. So it has this um, text hover or text scroll animation. It has this part here with the scroll, and it has this final part on a horizontal scroll. Now, I'm using this part only. So I have just customized this part. I don't need the other ones. Again, this is for a project that I'm doing. So I just needed this part so bad and I'm so happy that I found it. Now, this is my version. I have added this to be a fixed section so that I just have this part. And now you can see whenever I hover over the items, uh, the, this part stops or this panel stops. And whenever I hover other, the other one, the other one, goes back to work and this one stops and then if i click it just takes me to that website so let's just look at how this was built the structure of this is basically similar to any marquee that you build out there so i've made an episode about three ways of making a marquee one of them uses css and uh, the couple others use uh, workflow interactions now the main idea is the same you basically have to have a div that is uh, flex so this div that is flex inside it there are there is a div that is uh, overflow hidden uh, these divs are basically duplicated so there are two divs that are a panel and they're duplicated to give that um, feel of the infinity looping so when one of the panels finishes the other one is coming in so that gives it that feel of this infinity loop and then once the other panel comes in it just resets back to zero and in an instant of um, usually a duration of zero now this is all set up by timothy himself using attributes uh, what he did here is basically these uh, you just give an attribute to your panels call them tr marquee panel so tr timothy ricks super cool naming uh, tr marquee element so this is a panel and then the component itself has some elements so this is the component uh, this is the tr marquee vertical is true so this is a vertical uh, marquee uh, the scroll scrub basically is this animation that i have on scroll here so this is also set to true and then you can control the speed of the tr marquee now this is set to 50 uh, I think the original is set to 100, but you can control that speed uh, yourself. So uh, 50 is 50 pixels, so it's pretty slow. If The more the number is, the faster it goes. And you can set different speeds to the one on the right than the one on the left. So I can have this at like, let's say 100, uh, not 1100, just 100. And uh, if I publish, you're going to see that one of them will be faster than the other so if you publish you see that the one on the right is faster than the one on the left because this is 100 and this is 50. now let's just have a look at how this was made in 
the back end so the javascript here so basically we're using gsap to make that scroll animation uh, we're using gsap scroll trigger of course uh, the first part of the code is just telling it to follow the attributes that he sets up so if the attribute is true make the boolean to be true if the attribute is false make the boolean to be false if there is a string just pick it up if there is a number pick it up and um, this is basically just checking the attributes that you set on these components the second part is the attributes that you can use so you see here you have the tr marquee panel so this is the panel ones that you need to apply to every panel that you have so you so when you have those duplicated panels so you have two panels right so you apply tr element panel to both of them and then you see there is a trigger hover so this is the trigger hover that stops on hover so this is set to the parent element of the panel so here we have a marquee logos wrapper and this is the one that has the trigger hover and then inside it uh, after that we'll go over uh, trigger click so this is where we can click uh, trigger tr marquee speed so this is where you control the speed tr marquee vertical so this is to control whether it's vertical or horizontal uh, tr marquee reverse so this is uh, the other one because it goes in the reverse direction than this one and then tr marquee scroll direction is basically the direction of the scroll so i have this you know scrolling like this so when i scroll up it goes the other way when i scroll down it, it just reverses basically so this is the scroll direction part uh, tr marquee scroll scrub so this is what's giving it that scrub in the animation so it's like it's not just a normal scroll it's like it has that you know scrub in it and you can control that even further uh, down further on uh, the second so this is the the attributes that you can use uh, the second part is the setting so this is the moving distance it's minus 100 uh, if it's reversed it's plus 100 uh, you can see the marquee timeline it's one so these are defaults uh, if vertical settings then the speed is to be by height well the, the, the animation is to be by height if, if it's not then it's by width uh, the scrub setting so the value is one you we can increase that to be like 0 0.5 to have a nicer scrub let's try that out so right now if we look at this it has this scrub so if it's 0 0.5 let's see how that performs actually let's open another panel just to compare now it has this like delay in the scrub and this one is like a bit more faster this one is smoother so that depends on you you can just go in there and edit some stuff so this is the scrub object uh, now further on you can see the scroll scrub setting so you have more of the velocity of the scrub uh, more of the gsap so this is the utility clamps uh, scrub timeline so this is the scrub timeline the duration is 0 0.5 you can set this even further like let's say to one and uh, let's save and see how this performs and um, publishing let's open this in another panel now it's even faster i guess because we increase the duration and decrease the scrub so it's like super fast i think this one is the best one with the scrub 0 0.5 uh, also I would have this back to 50 because 100 is I think super fast so yeah this one is the best one let's take the the distance back to 1 yeah so what happens here what's giving me the scroll is basically I set up the parent element which is page main page section to be 300 view height now if i set this even further i can have more room to to scroll and to you know play around with this animation so now it's 500 i have more room to scroll this uh, this is up to you if you want to make a scroll if you have more sections in your page then maybe you just want it to scroll out of this 
that again depends on you and your use case uh, so basically that's how it is now what i like to do sometimes i see some of these awesome clonables and i just like to dissect the code and see how they build it of course this is how you learn to become a better waffle developer now once you see other people's work especially professionals like timothy ricks you can learn a lot from them you can learn from the way they think from the way they put down codes from the way they put things together and that's how you become a better waffle developer so i learn and i broaden my horizon so that i can make better animation over time so that's it for today let's keep going thank you for watching this video i hope i taught you something today stay tuned on this 100 days of waffle journey where we go over a lot of tips and tricks on how to become a better waffle developer or how to make your waffle journey even more enjoyable subscribe to this channel stay tuned on this 100 days of waffle journey by turning on that notification bell if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any comments please drop them in the comment section below and uh, see you tomorrow in day 36